yeah, my name is Francesca, and I'm a remote sensing expert at the British Geological Survey, and I'll tell you about a joint research that together with my colleague Deodato we are doing with the National Research Council of Italy. We love rivers, we love the heritage site of Nazca and the Nazca line, so our region of interest is in southern Peru and um, includes the entire river uh, basin of the Rio Grande where the Nazca civilization flourished just after the Paracas. The region is so important and so fascinating because it includes a lot of heritage that everybody knows about, basically. I'm sure you all have heard about the Nazca Lines and the amazing uh, geometrical, but also um, more uh, flower-like and animals of, uh, of the geoglyphs. You've heard about the ceremonial center of Kawachi and about the amazing network of ancient aqueducts that the Nazca civilization has built. So um, why did we start this research? Um, basically, there are a lot of hazards affecting the region, and they are not only natural hazards, like uh, possible runoff from uh, the Andean foothills, but also anthropogenic hazards in, uh, and with, with a very huge um, impact on the heritage of the region. So speaking about climate, it's really boring. It's a desert. It's totally arid. There is no rainfall or, well, actually uh, around 4 to 10 millimeters per year. So it's one of the driest regions we could, we could study. And for this reason, it was quite fascinating because we could use the potential of radar remote sensing to image the landscape and support the mission, the Italian mission of heritage conservation and geophysics um, that in the last years have spent a lot of effort by looking at the, at the area and monitoring illegal looting and um, identifying buried structures that could be uh, brought to, um, to, to the surface by legal excavation. So we started a couple of projects with the European Space Agency and the German Space Agency and were provided with a number of satellite data acquired over the uh, past 20 years uh, from the medium resolution, so we are talking about 20-30 meter resolution to the very high resolution, so up to one meter pixel on the ground. The potential of this data, I think it's huge. If you look at the pictures here, you can see that with one scene only, you can image the full drainage basin and have a single scene around 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers wide with pixels on the ground, 20, 30 meters big, and a repeat cycle of up to 35 days, which means you have an image every month. So you, you can look back at the archive, the image archives, and look back at the past and what happened over the last 20 or 30 years, depending on the archive you look at. So we um, have developed a methodology to analyze the data together. So we are looking at radar data. So radar data are um, made of two different components. One, one is the amplitude and the other one is phase. We mainly focused on the amplitude component, which gives us some sort of black and white vision of the area of interest. The brighter um, <coughs> the brighter the pixel in the radar scene, the um, higher the magnitude of the radar uh, signal backscattered to the radar sensor. So if you look at an image like that, and if you have a stack, a temporal stack, so a set of images that were over the same area but at different times, you can combine them together and look at the temporal variations that you <laughs> measured over the years. For instance, in the uh, image to the right, we see with darker red areas undergoing a significant amount of change in the radar response and the radar uh, signature over um, over a temporal frame of two years. So the um, temporal uh, variability is a function of the radar response of, of the area, and it's controlled by a set of characteristics that are um, uh, the, de depend on the, uh, on the radar sensor. So if you keep them, uh, if you use data acquired by the same radar sensor, the only variability you will get will depend from the local topography, roughness, and di dielectric properties, mainly soil moisture variations. So if we look at um, 
at the radar data and compare them with some optical data, in particular multispectral data from the Aster uh, sensor, we can see that um, rivers, I'm not going to be able to reach that point, <laughs> you can see that rivers, they have a radar response which is much brighter than the surrounding agricultural fields, while if you have um, water bodies or areas of calm water, like the pods of culture in the, in the same image, you will have specular reflection, so the um, radar response will be very, very dark and very, very low. Similarly, if you have very dry surfaces, like the sacred mountain of the Cerro Blanco, you have um, a greater penetration depth of the signal, and basically the radar signal is lost, and you don't get back much energy to, to the sensor. So, looking at the geoglyphs, um, we, we, we must uh, analyze first the, um, typo the construction typology of the geoglyphs, so they are called also negative features. So, they were built by removing, scratching the um, very dark gravel out, out of the of the surface of the valley, and what's what's left basically is a much uh, brighter terrain that appears in optical data is bright, but it appears the other way around in the radar data. And as you can see there to the right, you have even with a medium resolution image, which is not that great, you can still recognize all the different um, rectangular geoglyphs and some of which are unfortunately um, cut by the, by the main motorway of the, of the valley. So what we tried to do, having so many images available, was to analyze the temporal variations in the radar signatures for a set of areas. And in here we are looking at the variation of a couple of small regions of interest um, located along the river valley. And although each um, agricultural field has its own uh, typical signature depending on the type of crop and, and, and cultivation. There is um, seasonal fluctuations that reflect the groundwater fluctuations over time with, with seasons. And by studying that those fluctuations, we can um, derive whether there, there had been any changes related to the climate, to the changes in the climate with, with, uh, with years. So moving from um, a more qualitative analysis, we can also uh, go into a more quantitative uh, comparison of the different data. And we analyze a set of pairs of, of, of this huge satellite um, stack that we had, and we um, computed ratios between pairs of scenes. So as you can see to the, to the left, those are the original images. They are characterized by signals, also controlled by topography, and um, the response of the area to the side, the typical side looking geometry of the radar. So the radar doesn't look at the area of interest just from the top to the bottom, but has a sort of tilt in the looking geometry. So every time you have non flat surfaces, you'll have a lot, a strong component due to topography. But if you use the same sort of sensor and the same sort of acquisition geometry, when you uh, make the ratio between two scenes, what you get left, it's only the, a component due to the actual variation of the signal due to an actual change. So with colors, that are always helpful, um, in here I'm showing you variations along the river, the river plain occurred between 2004 and 2005 at the, at the top, while also we were able to the big changes occurring within different seasons, for instance, from, from May to November 2005. Um, one of the other um, targets of, of the study was the analysis of um, groundwater regime of the ancient Pukyus. So we compared our radar-based analysis at the top with an optical-based analysis and comparison of different vegetation in, in the indexes. And we found that even with a medium resolution image uh, <coughs> analysis with the radar, we could uh, depict a groundwater fluctuation in, uh, along an ancient Pukio that is actually um, five to, to 10 meter wide in, in, on, the, on the ground, whilst with the optical data, this wasn't actually pictured. So the potential of this data is huge. And the potential um, 
level of information that we can get from from such type of sensors is is really really great. So one of the natural hazards that um, have let's say the highest potential to have huge impact on the geoglyphs are um, mass movements or of sandy material and ra uh, runoff of sandy materials from the from the mountains this is not so don't, don't worry this is not actually affecting the geoglyphs but it's it's a very nice example of how fast the morphological changes occurring in in, in sandy dunes uh, at the foothills of the mountains can be. So in here we are comparing data for 2003, just two months apart, and by simply using um, a color composition between the three scenes, what you get is a clear picture of the morphological changes occurring in, uh, across the area of the dune, and you can track down the, the, the mass uh, transport across the dune if occurring in an area of the geoglyphs. So, I said before we were looking mainly at the amplitude information, but more recently we moved to the analysis of phase values. So, phase values in radar data, they depend on the distance between the sensor and, uh, and the image target. If, if there is a change, even of a few millimeters, you can track that down. So, in this product here, we have, com um, we have combined phase information from two different scenes acquired in 2004 and 2005, and the color scale indicates I with yellow um, areas where no uh, changes occurred, while the darker, the, the, the violet, the, the higher, the, the greater was the, was the change measured by the radar. And if we look uh, into detail and at the area of the ceremonial center of Kawachi, what we see is that um, um, the ceremonial center is, is within this um, circle. So while it's in some time, time frames, no change was measured. There are other time scales where there was uh, some change tracked down by the radar. In some cases, like uh, at the top, this was um, due to archeolo well, legal archaeological excavations uh, carried out by the mission. But unfortunately, in some other cases, like this one, we can, we can basically depict some signal uh, that is unfortunately related to illegal excavations and looting activities, uh, whereby a lot of um, looting holds were, were found, unfortunately, on site in areas that were not previously um, excavated. So we started with a medium resolution analysis, and now we are moving more into detail by exploiting high resolution and very high resolution data. And in here, you can see the amazing difference in the level of detail that you can get. Yes. Uh, when you move from medium resolution data to very high resolution data and up to one meter. And this is amazing from a remote sensing perspective because you can get a level of detail that is comparable with optical data. Um, but actually, sometimes radar data are capable to tell you much more. For instance, it's in this snapshot, you can recognize and, and perfectly map archaeological <coughs> features of the line but as well as an anthropogenic feature of the motorway, but the level of detail is fantastic, and radar data are not affected by weather con conditions, so if it's cloudy, you can anyway get an image with radar sensor, while if you use optical, basically you might be waiting for months before you get an actual um, image for your, for your study. So, to conclude, I won't tell you again about our conclusion so far. I'm just telling you this is a, a research that it's ongoing. We are supporting the, the mission and we are um, aiming at understanding um, whether landscape evolution in the area is affected by cl uh, changing climatic conditions. Of course, it, this is not exhaustive, but we are supporting the mission with remote sensing data and, and trying to help the archaeologists to understand whether there is a risk for the different archaeological features and heritage of the region due to natural um, and anthropogenic factors that were not uh, known before. I'll leave you with a thank you and a list of references that you can look at to get more details about our studies. Thank you.